Update. My, 22F, brother-in-law is on Grinder. Original. I decided to just tell her as quickly as possible so I called her and asked her if we could meet to get coffee and she was down. I showed her the screenshots and she wasn't surprised and the first thing she said was that he still isn't using the pictures she took for him. She said she knew about it and it was not something I needed to worry about but she thanked me for bringing this up to me. She then changed the topic and we drank coffee and when I was about to leave she went quiet and then said that she wanted me to know it is not something she was bullied into and she didn't mind it at all. She said she had other partners too and that she is asexual. I told her that it was very different the image they projected but it was not my business and all that mattered was that she is happy. It is pretty weird as I saw them as the old school puppy love kinda couple and it is wild that they date other people but at the same time but she seems happy and content. I think nothing else really matters. Too long did not read. My sister is Polly? And my brother-in-law is not cheating. So I guess she just finds other asexual people that don't want to have sex too? So she is just having emotional relationships with these people? Well you did what you had to do, now mind your own business. Tell your friend not to send that to anybody else and don't tell him about your sister and Bill. She told you she's happy, she's asexual and she doesn't mind. Clearly you can talk to her about her feelings or maybe if you have questions on her asexuality that's up to you, but keep it between you sisters. It might make you bond even more. But at the end of the day you see her happy, she told you she is and that's enough. I think ethical non-monogamy is much more common than we realize. Many couples choose to project a hetero-monogamous image but they are anything but. This is a best case scenario, honestly. She wasn't upset but recognized that you came to her out of love and concern and she is happy. That's a happy ending. A lot of people don't come out as poly because they're afraid of being judged. I'm glad you were able to talk to her and they might really be the puppy love kind of couple. Being poly doesn't mean you don't love your partner. Well, it good you know they are both in on it, so it was good to ask her and not wonder. Now you have to deal with all these other images in your head, not they are happy. Good lord, the aphobia in some of these comments is ridiculous. Glad you and your sister were able to have that conversation and that it all worked out. And you are right, as long as she and her husband are happy, then nothing else really matters. This isn't unusual. It happens a lot more than people think. Just. Not polite to talk about it openly. My wife and I are, ethically non-monogamous, we would never ever never ever tell our family or friends. They are very religious and would not understand anything about the choices we have made for ourselves. So we live a, double life. We are a happy monogamous couple in the eyes of our friends and family. We are wildly non-monogamous in our personal lives. So far that is working well, but one day our kids might find out. And then we'll have to figure out how to deal with that. GF is upset I want to break up as she didn't know cuddling her best friend was a boundary. I found them on a couch with her sleeping face down on him. I didn't wake them up or say anything, I came home. The next morning I told her that I don't think it will work between us as we have a very different definitions of what is acceptable in a relationship and we should break up so we can find more compatible partners. She started crying and demanded to know what happened. I ultimately told her and she said she didn't know it was a boundary and for me and it's unfair to break up over this. Was it unfair on my part? She is coming here to speak to me, I feel very confused. Would really love some advice. You are absolutely within your rights to end the relationship. Even if it wasn't specifically previously discussed as a boundary. I have never had such discussions with partners but would assume that this type of cuddling was not okay. Her behavior and wants, needs don't align with yours. She will want to be able to have this, closeness, with her friends and it will always make you feel uncomfortable and long term it most likely won't work out. Better to just end things now. I'm sure if the tables were turned she would not be happy. Nope wouldn't be okay with me. Some things in my opinion are reserved for your partner only. Back rubs, lap sitting, showering together, cuddling, and sleeping I. The same bed unless negotiated differently. Make sure if you stay with her you specifically tell her not to suck his dick or she will claim she didn't know it was a boundary of yours. Block her number. Some boundaries are pretty well implied in a relationship, unless otherwise discussed. There are a few people here who are basically attacking you, which is bizarre. This is absolutely reasonable cause to go separate ways. No one I have known and I'm pretty old sleeps on top of someone that they're not having sex with. Who tf would think to say, I have a boundary around this. Stick to your guns and break up. She's definitely crossing boundaries with her best friend. Bro, 
at least break up with her for being dummy if anything. Who in their right mind does that and says, I didn't know it was a boundary, a dumbass that's who. Why would her best friend be cool with that? Girl has a boyfriend and thinks it's okay for her to sleep on him, WTF. I wonder how she would react if she walked in and one of your female friends was asleep on top of you. My guess is that it would be something along the lines of, what is this bitch doing on top of you? Tears of joy. My mother and I can't stop arguing about the Ukraine and it's destroying our relationship. Edit. No I'm not trying to change my mother's mind. After many many years of living with her I know it's impossible. To preface this, my mother and I are both Russian, but we haven't lived there in many years. We moved to a western country when I was younger and while I've been back a few times to visit relatives, she has never gone back and does not plan to. The kicker is, she's a patriot in the worst way. She sees Putin as some kind of, savior, and says, he is freeing the people of Ukraine, obviously, I could not agree with her less and we've been arguing non-stop about it. We've always had political disagreements but for the most part one could ignore them because we always looked out for each other. And regardless of how terrible our arguments got I still loved her and she still loved me. And I know I have no right to throw myself a pity party when the lives of so Ukrainians are being destroyed even as I type this. But there's no one I can ask about this as none of my friends have really faced anything like this and it makes me so angry that my mum can watch people suffering and then call them crazy for not accepting Russia's help. And the worst part is the more she looks at me with a teary look in her eyes and tells me how horrible I am for not listening to her. The person who has always looked after you, the more I start wanting to believe her, and it's driving me insane. I've been spending as little time at home as possible but I still very much live with my mother. I try not to bring it up with her but then she'll bring it up herself nearly every time. It almost always ends either with her crying or me leaving the house for several hours. I don't know I don't expect anyone to like empathize with this but if any of you have any advice on how to deal with this I would really appreciate it. Update. I've seen a few people saying to ask my mother why she doesn't want to live in Russia, and I just wanted to say I do know why and there's no point in bringing it up with her. I'm not trying to change her mind cause there's no point I'm just asking for other ways to deal with it. Update 2. Also sorry I can't take the the out of the title but to the one who educated me on it thank you. The last bit is emotional blackmail. I'd just be like, yay, Ukraine's mums are crying too leaving their husbands behind. You're just like them. And walk out. Then shut it down every time she discusses it. Putin is so great, Putin commits war crimes. Putin is a saver. Putin is currently killing people. Putin is liberating Ukraine. Is he gonna do the same to Finland? They're doing better than Russia and he's threatening to destroy them if they join NATO can't liberate someone doing better than you. Once you have said your response, simply repeat it to whatever she has to say. Until she shuts up and goes away. Totally stonewall her. Works every time. Putin's been in charge for a long time, yet she felt the need to move to the West for a better life. She doesn't see the hypocrisy? Why doesn't your mom ever want to return to Russia? Because she would have to face the reality of Russia not the propaganda vision she has in her mind? Yo I'm literally in the exact same situation, my mom and I are both Russian as well. I recently yelled at her super hard on the phone and hung up on her and made her upset. That was an awful feeling. Is the conflict important of course. Is my mother a military general? No. So then I texted her that I got emotional and upset and I still loved her. Then I also said we should not talk about Ukraine anymore. She agreed to that. This is working for us. When she brings it up, do not respond. Ever. No reaction at all. What will she do with the silence? Argue with it? I am not discussing this is the most she should get. For your own well-being, you have to shut it down and walk away. Just understand that she has a different live experience than you. Imagine what Russia was like before Putin, right after the Soviet Union collapsed. Not saying this in defense of Putin but have some sympathy for you mom who was there at a very dark time in Russian history and probably sees Putin as the guy who brought Russia back on some level. I'm in a similar situation, except for my mom lives in Russia and I don't. It's very frustrating and I've tried to tell her to not discuss it with me but she still slips and does. People here who are saying to cut ties with your own mom cause of this this is crazy. There are obviously reasons for why she thinks like this, just as there are reasons why every single person thinks the way they do. Be it propaganda, brainwashing, defense mechanism. Doesn't mean she is a terrible person. Your mom is wrong here. I understand that maybe she was born when the Soviet Union was still together so she might see what Putin is doing as a good thing, 
but he's destroying people's lives. Do not let her emotionally manipulate you. She is extremely disinformed. Good luck. Just need to vent about my drunk husband currently sleeping on the bathroom floor. He's 29 so frankly he's too old for this shit. He is too old to not know his limit. His dad is a former alcoholic, who hasn't had a drink in over 30 years, and both of his grandfathers died of alcoholism. He knows he needs to be extra careful but lately he's been reckless. He is still not an alcoholic because he does not have a physical dependency on alcohol, so I'm both worried and angry. I'm angry because since he is not suffering from an addiction he is on the floor because he made his own stupid choices. I'm worried because he might be in his way to becoming an addict. I called his dad and asked for his help because my husband is a combative drunk and 190 pounds and lifts weights every day and I'm 135 pounds and stopped working out when everything shut down during the pandemic. His dad was furious at him. He got him in bed and told me he'll be back in the morning. As soon as the door closed my husband got out of bed and tried to get into the shower again. He vomited close to 10 times. Some of it in the toilet, some of it in the shower. I'm making him unclog the shower drain himself in the morning. He vomited so much I genuinely considered calling 911 to get his stomach pumped. It doesn't help he's got a visible bump on his forehead and he can't tell me how he hit his head. So all night I'll be up worried. Is he just drunk? Or is he also concussed? He can't fall asleep if he's got a concussion. But I'm not calling for medical help because this is America and I genuinely don't know if we can afford the hospital bill. Now I'll be up all night listening to his snores to assure me he's still alive. I'm talking to his parents in the morning about this and I'll probably stay there for the whole day too. He can take care of his own damn hangover and I'm gonna want the apartment cleaned too when I get back. As an ex-alcoholic myself I would recommend you to start to think of your husband as an alcoholic because he is one. He is still not an alcoholic because he does not have a physical dependency on alcohol. Hi. Uh. That's not the definition of addiction nor alcoholism, and that being some people's imaginary line to define a real problem has killed people. You do not need to be alcohol dependent to be an addict, alcoholic. You do not need to drink every day to be a real one either. There are binge alcoholics. Do not maintain this definition. If he cannot stop once he starts and continues this pattern of behavior consistently despite negative consequence, he is an alcoholic. That's addiction. Shopping and video game addicts are not dependent on these things. Addiction is the pattern of behavior. Addiction is not dependence. Show him this post. He needs to know how much his behavior is impacting you. I'm not an alcoholic because I'm not physically dependent, is exactly what an alcoholic would say. My husband is a recovering alcoholic and we went through all of this. Don't hesitate to reach out if you need support. Our Al-Anon or an in-person Al-Anon meeting is a great place to start. Look whatever you want to call it your husband is a problem drinker. He binge drinks to dangerous levels and he has a problem with alcohol that is affecting his life. Right now he sounds like he needs medical attention. I think you need help. That's why you posted to hear not our off micist. Reach out to a support group for yourself. Dude. Tell that motherfucker 30 meetings in 30 days or you're fucking out. Your husband is an alcoholic. He's past the point of being careful. He needs double A. He needs to stop drinking completely. People with a family history of alcoholism are more likely to suffer from it. Tolerating combativeness, cleaning up after him and worrying over him may seem natural and necessary but it's enabling behavior. You should leave. He needs a wake-up call. You could be saving his life by no longer tolerating his self-destructive behavior. If he were just vomiting, it wouldn't be worth the 911 call. But, the head injury is definitely cause for concern like you said. If he's concussed he shouldn't sleep. The dad sounds helpful. Maybe consult him and possibly ask if he's in a place where he may be able to help financially for this and you pay him back?